Good morning. I love beginnings. They are very special times, and we're at the beginning of a new year, and always we're at the beginning of a new creation. I invite you to use this service, if you would, to make that commitment to let this, this year be an expression of the beauty and the magnificence of the spiritual being that you are. Thank you for joining us. In this moment, in this place, in the stillness of our open hearts, we have come to share the presence of the God within and to hold a sacred space. In this moment, Where we feel the oneness of all We have come here to build the sanctuary of love In this moment, in this place In this moment, in this place Good morning and welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Please remain seated and join us in singing our opening song, This is the Year. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. This is the year that your ships come in. This is the year you find Christ within. This is the year that will be bound to live. This is the year you have much to give. This is the year when you know the truth. This is the year when you find the That will bring happiness. This is the year you will live to bless. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. Mitch and Steve are union singers. Yeehaw! And today with us, our guest singer is Liz Ricca Ahern. Well, good morning. My name is Ron, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Unity of Waller Creek. God, I, I always mess that up. A thousand times I've said it. I don't know my brain. Anyways, good morning. My name is Ron, and welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. We are, we are very glad to have you with us. If you would join me in welcoming our online folks, so please turn around and wave to the camera. Thank you for being with us, and know that you are already part of our spiritual community. And if you're new here in the sanctuary with us to Unity, a special welcome to you. Happy New Year. And we are very glad that you are with us. So unity is a positive spiritual path. And what that means, whether we're in a comfortable space or an uncomfortable space, whether we're with pain or with joy, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Okay, let's do that again. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. 
that's the truth, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. So that's one one of the universal truths that we believe believe here at Unity. Another universal truth is that there are many paths to that spirit within us. In fact, every person has their own personal spiritual path. And so in our services, sometimes you may hear music or teachings from other spiritual paths. It's because we know and we respect the spiritual path and they all lead us to the same place. That wonderful, loving, divine presence within all of us. So let us open our service with our affirmation prayer, um, centering ourselves on that divine presence. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's take a deep breath and feel that. Let's say it again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Take that in even deeper. And one more time. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. So please remain seated and join us in, in, our, in our next musical selection. Take that deep breath in through your heart. Just as you pretend to breathe in, just breathe in the awareness of all this divine love in which we live and move and have our being. And as you breathe out, rest, open, receptive. Now, as this is our entry into our time of prayer and meditation together, we go around, get comfortable. And in that way that is comfortable for you, turn that awareness within. And we begin that entry into this beautiful inner experience by inviting the music to draw us to the very center of our heart. Oh, that I am God. Be 
what's comfortable for you, I invite you to join in. Beloved Presence, Father, Mother, God, infinite love. As we turn within, seeking to awaken, to awaken our awareness of your presence, we acknowledge that you are that which calls us into full awareness. You are that which awakens us and in our awareness that which we embrace. And as we sit here in the beginning of a new year, We start this creation aware of you. Aware of you is a life within our bodies, giving us health and vitality. Aware of your presence as the illumination upon our minds and hearts that we might understand and know clearly each step to take and bringing forth that which is the fulfillment of our beings. And you are this love that flows through us, that lifts us, fills us, and that flows through our touch as our lives bless another. It flows through our voices as we speak the words of wholeness and healing and blessing. The love that reaches through barrier and connects us as we experience our oneness with each other in you as you. Beloved Presence, we know that it is your wisdom that unfolds each of our lives. And that in every experience that is before us, you are there. You are there as love, as healing, as wisdom. You are there as change, and you are there as the changeless. And so as we stand on the cusp of this new year, we know it is a year filled with your goodness, filled with your love, filled with your wisdom, expressing your radiant life. So with this knowing, We can take and enter into this experience of sacred stillness. This inner place where we have asked the mind to still. Opened our hearts through the power of serenity. And we simply rest at one with you. As you called us to this place through these words that were sung, through these words first given through the psalmist. Be still 
and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still. invite you to gently simply breathe the feeling of love through your heart (coughs) divine presence as we experience you as this love within so experience this feeling of love that is the touch of your presence upon this world of feeling we live in as we experience this love and its goodness and its creative power We are open and receptive. And then we take this beautiful love that is divine presence itself. And knowing that its touch brings wholeness, brings peace, brings blessing. We take this moment to send this love into our own bodies to bless every cell and system as we are lifted into that wholeness that is your nature within us. And we radiate this love to our mind and heart, calling forth the wisdom and understanding that you are in us. And we send this love through our hearts to each one who is dear to us, blessing each person, enfolding them in this love, treasuring them, blessing, healing, guiding, uplifting. And now we send this love out across the spiritual community touching each person and blessing everyone in their world. We embrace every prayer request brought here and we know with each one you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. 
and this love flows from our hearts. It goes forth from here as waves of love across the communities in which we live, blessing, bringing care, wisdom, healing. Across our nation, blessing, bringing wisdom and healing. It goes on beyond all boundaries to touch and bless the peoples of the world. And we are grateful that our love is joined by all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillside. For in seeking to know you, beloved presence, we are all one. And gratefully, we send forth this love that you are upon our hearts. We send it to this beautiful earth to bring harmony and balance to all her systems. We send it for blessing to her creatures. And we send our love about the earth that it might touch the heart of every single person in the earth. For beloved presence, you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And once again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Now in the presence of that infinite love that indwells each one. Amen.
Jesus, bring me through the sanctuary this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is birthday Sunday, the first one of the year. Your birthday falls in this month. Please dance, we may celebrate you. <laughs>
inspired me. Thank you. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that happened in a couple of weeks when our class starts, my first, that's the first time I've done a whole class on fairy tales. And that one is right in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dreams and those things that are on our heart. So, how many of us did New Year's resolutions? Anybody? There's, there's a few resolution folks out here. How many of you thought about what you really wanted to do, but have worked at it for too many years to put it in a New Year's resolution? <laughs> Okay, I understand that one too. I, I was surprised. I was, I was um, up here during our burning bowl ceremony. And we'd gone through and releasing the stuff from the past year. And then there's a part of it where we write that letter to God. Uh, acknowledging gratefully that which is uh, to be created for us in this, in this new year. And I noticed, yeah, there were a few things there. And I, I started writing them down. And uh, so I looked at that, and then I thought, well, those, those are pretty good things. You know, there, there was something about health, and there was something about finances, and there was something that was, that was creative, and, you know, and I'd put down those, and I figured, well, whether or not I call them that, they're kind of like New Year's resolutions. And then I remembered, I'm old enough to have done a few New Year's resolutions. <laughs> Two to three years, and we're in the guilt part of the experience. Oh, I didn't do that. Anybody have that part of their, you know, oh, I've already blown it. I'm not, not doing it. And then I remembered, okay, there's, this is a beautiful creative time. Uh, New Year's is that experience that we have of reflection. And so we look at what's taken place and what is it that we want to bring forward. So, and it's very powerful because we have this collective creative energy and process. And so I said, well, where's mine in here? And so I took a look and realized, well, it looks to me like everything I put down was from my head. They were all a to-be-accomplished, as though my to-do list wasn't long enough. Anybody have a short to-do list and you've got <laughs> lots of room to add extra things? And, and, <laughs> and so I'm going, wait a minute, I know better than that. So I, I thought, well, so what is this about? Because there were... There were things that had value there. You know, I looked at, I looked at, the, at the physical one about getting more healthy and exercise and losing weight and all that sort of stuff. And now, that's nothing new. Why would this year change it? <laughs> then I realized, the truth is, I really don't care. <laughs> It's just one of those things I think I should want. And then I thought, well, you know, what about checking with my heart on this? Now, what we know is that most of the evaluation that we do, most of the reflection is through our heads. We kind of figured out this is, good, you know, good for that, bad for that, naughty and nice, you know, all those things that we do. Okay, and what if, what if I actually checked in with my heart? And so when I looked at that, what I realized was, no, the truth is, I really don't care about any of that. What I care about is having the energy and strength and vitality to go out and experience and explore this beautiful world I live in. And I want to go hiking with my grandkids. And I want to... I want to be able to head off into those special places in, in nature and those things I care about, they're from here. They aren't a task list. But what happens is once they activate, it's not hard 
to get up and do the things that help me go there. But when I'm doing the way the head creates, I understand our minds are polarized. So they're, they're going to do it. You know, if you had that on your list and you don't do it, the appropriate response is guilt. Because that's how the brain works. It goes, wrong, you said you were going to do it, you didn't. Okay? The heart doesn't do that. It's smarter than that. It goes, remember what you loved. Would you like more of that? Join me. There's, it's actually a beautiful understanding in how we create. And there's a point where as spiritual beings, we begin to grow up and take our creations to a new level. As a spiritual being, we are here in the time of tremendous creative spiritual energy. We're here at a time of tremendous possibility. What a year we have before us. And your soul, in its journey, has deep desires of what it would love to be about. So it's most appropriate to connect with that. But when we do, it's a different way of creating. Let me share with you a... As I, as I think about this, I'm drawn to two different scriptures. One from the Bible, the New Testament. First Corinthians said, God gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells within you. So they're talking about that increase, that creation, coming as we connect with that within and let it flow through us. And then from Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching, ancient, beautiful, confusing Chinese. <laughs> Therefore the Master has but does not possess, acts but does not expect. When her work is done, she forgets it. That is why it lasts forever. Confusing. <laughs> so what I, what I think Lao Tzu is doing here is pointing us to two different parts of ourselves, having but not possessing. Your mind can't do that. If it makes, I'm going to do this, it owns it. If I don't do it, then, I'm a, then there's a consequence because I possess that. That's me. It gets all caught up in a part of ourselves that the, the, one of my favorite uh, metaphysicians, Emily Cady, called the personality. It's a description of the, that part of us that defines ourselves by how we see Ourselves, how the brain goes out and figures, oh, I'm this person, I have this kind of ideas, uh, I look like this, I do this sort of thing. And we define ourselves that way, that personality that we are. But then there's this other part of the self. There's this self that she calls the individuality. And that's this beautiful spiritual being, the soul that you are, that is moving through this life and uses the personality to gain and grow, but is not the personality. It's greater. It existed long before and well long after. And this is this connector to the divine, this that we connect with through our hearts, this that does not possess, but is engaged right in the middle of this experience. This that does not expect is unattached and yet gives full energy into its creation. Acts but does not expect. And that is why I think Lao Tzu, when we get to that place, that is why he forgets it but it lasts forever. In other words, without attachment, 
it still is a powerful creation because it's not the form, it's the consciousness. And the consciousness once created is truly ours. There's a, another expression of Lao Tzu here. In work, do what you enjoy. When you are content to be simply yourself and don't compare or compete, everyone will respect you. Now, respect is that sense of being in harmony with our world. And not comparing or competing is that sense of not using the mind to evaluate where we are, but being ourselves, being connected with who we are, expressing who we really are. To put this, to put Lao Tzu into kind of a contemporary uh, translation, Zen student asked his master, uh, is it okay to use email? And his master replied, yes, but no attachments. <laughs> okay. Lao Tzu right there in a moment, yeah. So there's, there's this experience of creating, of making that journey to the heart. Now, this, this afternoon, with the hologramming, what that focuses on is energizing, intentionally energizing the creation with the heart. But the most important part is actually choosing to express what's on your heart. That's where the real desire is. That's why we want to put something on a list for the year. That's why we want to say, this year I want to do it differently. This year I want to add this. I want to explore this. I want to express this. Because behind that is this beautiful soul. Its purpose. And what it wants to express through this personality that we are. And making that choice. During the uh, holiday, Catherine and I were up in Seattle with uh, my oldest daughter and her family. But my granddaughter, who's 11, was sitting there, and she was right in the middle of us all the time. We're talking and sharing and interacting with her, and she's got this computer in her lap, and her fingers are just going and going and going. And finally, I said, Fiona, what are, you, what are you doing there? Oh, I'm writing a book. Now... Okay, one of the things on my list was write the book and get it published, okay? Now, my problem with that was I had to ask myself, do I really want to get it published? And the, tr the answer was, I didn't care. I already did one, why well, have two? What difference does it make? But when I got to my heart, what I realized was, it's true I don't care about Publish, not publish, who, what, why, money, all that stuff. But something so beautiful was shared with me that I really desire to share it with others because it has blessed my life. And I would like theirs to be blessed too. And that, once I connected with that, what I found is it began to flow. And I'm looking at this little 11-year-old. Oh, have you been doing that much? Yeah, I've, ju I've uh, done two books. <laughs> well, whoa! <laughs> And this story that she was writing, a, a children's story, was just flowing through her fingers. It reminded me, hearing of a, of a woman uh, in, in her 20s. Basically, she had graduated from college, and her statement of it is kind of, so I graduated at 21, and by 27, you know, I had accomplished complete failure of every part of my life. Okay, and uh, if, if, you know, she'd entered into a marriage and that didn't work, and so now she's a single parent with this, this little daughter, 
and you know she's got this education so she can go out and earn a living and basically is not doing so successfully uh, you know requiring government help just to be able to eat complete failure and she she shared that one of the gifts of that experience was that the fear left. She'd always been afraid of failure. And now she'd done it. <laughs> and she was alive. And they were going to make it. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't happy. It wasn't good. It was very difficult. But they were going to make it. So she wasn't afraid anymore. Now, when she, when she wasn't afraid, she could finally ask the question she'd had to avoid. Because the answer to it suggested she might really fail. And that was, what did she really want to do? She'd taken everybody's advice on going to college and what she should do and where she could go and what she could get a job and how, how you make it in the world. And the result was failure. So finally she could ask herself, what do I want to do? And the reason Fiona's writing reminded me of her was what she wanted to do was write stories for children. Now, if you've ever worked in that part of the world, you're very aware that people who write stories for children aren't particularly financially successful. But she'd already failed, so it didn't matter. <laughs> So she was able to say, it's okay, I can do this. It's okay that the most wonderful part of my day is telling a story to my, my daughter at night. That I can make the world come alive for children in a beautiful way. And she realized in all those jobs and all those classes, what would happen in, in between was she'd run off and write stories. Because that was what she loved. So finally she had, she gave herself permission to do what her heart wanted to do. It was write stories. And we all have experienced her story of Harry Potter. And it has nurtured the child in every one of us. And that woman who is willing to be poor and do what her heart asked her to is also a billionaire, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> Which wasn't on her goal list. <clears throat> but what was there was being in touch with herself and what she really wanted to be about. And this year, we could create from there. This year, we could let what's really on our hearts express. Now, our heads are going to get in there with all sorts of things we could, should do and how to do it and all that sort of stuff. And it's all right. Sometimes we'll say yes to that. And sometimes we'll just say, who cares? But what you really are about, you are a magnificent spiritual gene, spiritual being on a journey that has meaning and purpose and you chose to be here and now to fulfill that purpose. And I don't know what your purpose is. I don't know what it is that your being wants to express, but you do. So I invite you this year, as, as we begin it, to make the commitment to say yes to your heart this year. I say yes to my heart. Join me. I say yes to my heart. Doesn't that yes feel good? Again. I say yes to my heart. Yeah. What a beautiful instrument that connects you 
to the very highest wisdom and purpose and power within you. Again, I say yes to my heart. What a beautiful year is before us. Yeah, those are, those are the dreams, the things that may seem impossible or make no sense. Doesn't matter. Within you, that which has placed that on your heart has placed everything there to support its fulfillment. For creating the world that expresses the amazing wisdom and power and beauty of your hearts. <clears throat> It is now time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the back of each chair. If you are following us from home and would like to leave a donation, we ask that you select the Donate Now button on our Watch Live page. Thank you. <coughs> Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, taught that our spiritual connection opens us to God's abundance expressing in our lives. He said, be thankful for every blessing you gain and grateful for every demonstration as if it were an unexpected treasure dropped in your lap. This will keep your heart fresh for true thanksgiving may be likened to rain falling on ready soil, refreshing it and increasing its productiveness. I invite you now to take your tithe offering in your hand and know that God is the source of all your good. Please repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God.
our children together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. The light of God shines through you. Let's stand and take hands and share together our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And our peace song.
are the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. Yes.